I'm Chef Susan O'Dell. Welcome to the Fidel Kitchen. When you see something on a menu called breaded chicken or breaded fish or breaded shrimp, you know it's going to have a nice crispy texture and be probably delicious and moist. I want to talk about how to bread something. Today we're going to use chicken fingers. You could just as easily use fish or shrimp yourself or even maybe a pork cutlet. But breading is slightly different from battering too. I want to just differentiate those two. A batter is purely a liquid that you'll dip something into and typically fry, whereas breading, we're going to have at least least one dry ingredient and one wet ingredient. So let's have a look at breading. So the ingredients I'm going to use for breading, I'm going to use flour, an egg for my liquid, and breadcrumbs. Some recipes will only call for the egg and the breadcrumb part, or maybe the egg and the flour part. You need at least one dry ingredient and definitely one wet ingredient. So just crack your egg into a nice shallow bowl and place your other dry ingredients on plates. Makes it easier to bread when we're working with little small pieces. Breading is a pretty simple process, but there are really two tricks to learn. And one of them is to be sure to season your dry ingredients. Remember, there's really no flavoring. I'm using panko, which is a dried breadcrumb, and it's very plain and no flavor, which is good because I'm adding my own flavor. You might even want to add a little hot spice like cayenne pepper. I'm also going to season my flour. Season all your dry ingredients to make sure that you have enough flavor in the finished product. The second trick to breading is your hands. You want one dry hand and one wet hand at all times. I'll show you what I mean. But if you end up with one hand that hits both the wet and the dry ingredients, you're going to get a glove of breadcrumbs on this hand. Let's go ahead and bread now. I'm going to take one of my nice little chicken pieces and I'm going to coat it in the flour using my left hand. This is my dry hand. Shake off any excess. You don't want too much flour. I'm going to drop it in my wet ingredient, which is egg. And I'm going to use my right hand, which is my wet hand, to coat it nicely. I'm going to put it back in my other dry ingredient, which is my breadcrumbs. And I'm going to make sure that the whole piece is nicely covered so I get a good crisp coating all the way around. I'm going to place it on my baking tray and I'm going to do all of my chicken pieces before I cook. So I'll be ready to go. Once all of your chicken has been breaded, you can either bake it just like it is, or you can pan fry it, which is what I'm going to do, or you can deep fry it. Let's just have a look at pan frying. I've got some olive oil in here, and it's a little more than coating the bottom of the pan. Maybe it's an eighth of an inch deep. You want to get the oil nice and hot so you get a sizzle when it goes in. Just gently lay the chicken in there. Don't crowd the pan too much. Work in batches if you need to. Make sure it's nice and hot, and then don't touch it. Let it brown on one side. We're going to turn it over and brown it on the other side, and then we're going to take it out. And just one more trick to breading and cooking. If you're taking it, if you're frying it on the stove like I am, put it on a wire rack to cool once it's finished cooking, and instead of putting it on paper towels. If you put it on paper towels, it seems to absorb some of the oil, but it also makes the bottom soggy. It's better to put it on a wire rack, let the oil drip through, and they'll cool and crisp up that way. So it's been about three minutes. They're nicely golden brown, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my chicken and let them finish cooking on the other side. Once your chicken is brown on the second side, go ahead and remove them to your baking tray, your wire rack over your baking tray. Let them cool a little before you eat them. And while they're hot, give them a nice little sprinkle of extra salt for flavor. This technique works really well with shrimp or fish or other meats, so try it and you'll use it all the time. Bon appetit.